<laughs> Welcome to another day in Turkey exploring. It's kind of gone, it's going really quickly. So today is day six of our travel talk uh, tour. And, and there's just been so much to do. I, I can't believe we're on day six already. I know, neither can I. Last night we got into a, a new town and it was right on the sea and we had a balcony overlooking the water. And the, it's crazy the how diver, diverse the weather is here because literally a few days ago we were in the snow and now we're in the in the sunshine. It's so much nicer having sunglasses on and having some having some sun. We've come to a place called Ephesus. Yeah, so this is an ancient port town and it's just full of these. I don't know if you can see behind us, full of these yeah, probably. ancient ruins. It's incredible. So this was uh, considered to be one of the. Mediterranean's largest or most critical vital kind of uh, trading ports. There's huge amounts of history about this place obviously because of the significance of the ruins and everything that are here uh, but I think it's just so early in the morning we just want to walk around and just <laughs> wake up a bit. We just wake up a little bit and just take it in then show some shots yeah and then we'll probably share some of the maybe the short version of the history and um, we'll just appreciate it first though I think. a little bit of everything here this is an amphitheater we haven't heard about uh, what it was what it was used for where did you say the VIPs go there are some, some seats which I haven't spotted yet they have like lion's claws on either side that's where the VIPs sit huh. okay we can't we can't exactly I'm assuming, <laughs> I'm assuming that it's up high you know like in the good, the good but then often VIPs are at the front well, well, <laughs> <this> <laughs> <out>. <laughs> BRB. <laughs> Either way, it's a huge site. Entrance is back there. The theatre was there. It's all these ruins through this bit. They're, they're, these ones don't look as impressive. They're a little bit more of the smaller stone and marble. It's got the pillars and everything here. This awesome archway that actually looks like it's being reconstructed. And then uh, come on around. It always amazes me in places like this that they let people walk everywhere. Like yeah, there are some ropes, but we were just in yeah. the ancient theatre. And just it walking. It my mind that you're just allowed to to walk all over it. Yeah. So are all the cats. There are so many there's, cats. There's here. so many animals around here. According to legend, Ephesus was founded by the tribe of the Amazons, the great female warriors. There's a few different thoughts behind the name, but we think it loosely translates to city of the mother goddess. There's been various wars and changing of hands since those days, but Ephesus is mostly known as a Greek city and the most vital trading center through the Med. It's also known as an important religious site and it's obviously still a super popular spot for travelers who want to go deep into the history. has it that while you are passing through the gate, just open your arms and put your palms, you will absorb the power of Hercules. I've been coming here for 25 years. Do <laughs> <laughs> you believe that it works? <laughs> no. <laughs> Let me try that. See if the rumors are true. Oh, you're gonna be quite big to do this. Yeah. I don't know if I'm quite tall enough. I need all the power I can get. If you've seen our video from South Korea, Stace is a Taekwondo master, so I need as much strength to survive in this relationship as possible. <laughs> That's a wrap on Ephesus. It was such an interesting place. I'm glad that we had Kev, our guide, to kind of give us all the stories. There's heard, so much. Yeah, we heard a lot of kind of like historical facts and stuff, but the most quirky thing <laughs> that I wanted to share was about the public toilets. So 
<laughs> there's 48 basically holes in the in these marble slabs underneath it is a stream or a river yeah, yeah. or something some water and they used to use it as a social place for the men so you go there sit down he was saying like people have a smoke and have a drink i don't drink, know drink I don't some know wine and, I, and there's people playing music sitting in the people corner play music apparently the rich people used to send down their slaves which is horrible <laughs> to warm up their seats for them and then they'd come down and, and take their spot so that the marble wasn't too cold for them they're so close together as well they're so like you very cozy no privacy we'd be touching thighs with your neighbor <laughs> that you just never see anything <laughs> like that in today's age it's crazy Yesterday wrapped up a little bit earlier than we expected, but it was it was actually really nice to have uh, some downtime in the afternoon. It was really nice. It's been like pretty fast paced this trip, so it's yeah, like Dane said, it was good to just have a bit of downtime. But then things <laughs> got wild. So uh, there was a beach party organised, and there were bonfires, and everyone was just having a couple of drinks down on the beach. So really we nice. mixed together with uh, some of the other groups from Travel Talk because it was about because this is quite a big a special trip. We haven't really talked too much about mm -hmm. it, but we're doing the 11 day Anzac trip because well, today we're making our way towards Gallipoli and we're actually going to be sleeping in Gallipoli so that we're there to wake up for the dawn service and for the ceremonies on Anzac Day, which is really special for New Zealanders and Australians in particular. We'll go into more about that in, uh, yeah, we'll explain more later. in the next video. But so now we've come to, uh, just for like a morning stop only, thought it would make sense to carry over from yesterday, is we've come to Troy. See in the background there? That one, that horse that you can see there, that's actually not the main, the most well-known. Was, horse? Is that the Turkish version that, of that's it? That's the Turkish something? one. You can actually climb up it. There's people up there. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know what the story is about Troy, we'll share it in a little bit, but we're going to take a wander around, get some shots, uh, have a look for ourselves, and then uh, paraphrase what <laughs> yeah. happens in uh, the story of Troy and how it relates to the movie and everything. Okay, so we didn't make it very far. <laughs> we're just walking along and there's this turtle tortoise. I don't know what, I don't know what his name is. I don't know what he is, who he is. But... I also have no idea. What's he doing here? Plot twist. <laughs> this is not where the Troy horse that we've seen in pictures is actually... He doesn't live here. He actually lives in a city called Chanakali, which is where we're going to be staying tomorrow night. So this, what we've seen today, is the city of Troy, and it was where nine cities were built on top of each other throughout yeah. time. This is where the Turkish Troy horse is. And it's also got, it's got loads of old ruins and mm. stuff. Um, and they've got them all numbered, which is quite nice. If you're really into history and you came here, you could read all yeah. of the signs. We try not to go too deep into it, but you can see the numbers of which part of the wall or which part of the structure was from one of those nine cities. It's so interesting. It really is. Um, so should we briefly talk about the story of Troy now or not? No, I feel, oh yeah, maybe we should. Okay. We got super distracted by the squirrels and the turtles, but back to the history. So Troy gained lots of interest after the Brad Pitt movie came out in 2004. The most recognisable horse is actually the one that they used in the movie, but isn't the one on the site. Anyway, the story goes, Greeks and the Trojans were at war, and the Greeks pulled a sneaky move by pretending to retreat in the night and leaving an enormous wooden horse found by the Trojans the next morning. Thinking it was an offering to Athena, they wheeled it inside their walls, not realizing that it was actually full of their Greek enemies who snuck out of the horse, opened the gates from the inside, helping them take control of the city in quite like the snakiest way possible. The other major, like amazing point about coming to Troy is that there are so many dogs here, little puppies as well. Oh, he's dreaming. <laughs> Also, they have fresh, cold orange juice as well, which is amazing. I think this is 20 lira, and it is so sweet and so delicious. It's not just here, though, that the dogs lie everywhere. But this is so standard. Look at this guy in the middle of a car park, and there is buses 
absolutely everywhere. There's a whole bunch on the ground over there as well. Another guy there. They just sleep out. Look, this bus is coming. There's a dog just chilling on the ground. It's hilarious. They've got no chill. They just go wherever they want. As it started to get dark, I think that's when everyone sort of noticed that there were flashing lights. There was a huge police presence. It felt really airy and scary and that's also the point in the night where people started to get messages from family asking oh, yeah. if they if they were safe if they were okay and so we start like wondering like, you know why yeah. this quite became quite yeah. there was just this huge feeling of just fear anxiety tension 